I just cracked the code on how AI actually wants you to talk to it. And by the end of the video, you'll know exactly which prompts I use to generate videos like these, and how to get the best AI outputs for whatever tool you're using. What's up guys, this is Ben from God of Prompt, and today I'm gonna show you how to master prompt engineering in record time. Most people talk to AI like they're texting a friend, but did you know that the companies who make these tools literally tell you exactly how to interact with them to get the best results? Well, my goal today is to accelerate your learning journey, starting with how to structure your prompts for 99% of use cases. Then I'll break down the four most overpowered ways to format this text to get the best results depending on which AI tool you're using. So regardless if you're using AI to brainstorm, to write reports for you, to summarize stuff, to generate videos, you want to have a base prompt structure. If you keep the basic structure in mind, it'll help you to not forget certain aspects of your prompt. It helps you give AI as much information as possible so that it gives the best result as possible. So OpenAI is the company that built ChatGPT and they have a cookbook online, which is uh, sort of a prompting guide. And they say, here's a good starting point for structuring your prompts. You give the AI a role and objective, the instructions it should follow, subcategories if it's more detailed instructions, specific reasoning steps, output format you want. You can provide examples of a good output, any additional context you can think of, any final instructions, and you tell it to think step by step. So let's dive into a fun but also practical example of how this prompt structure works. Let's say that our business, the Krusty Krab, has been having a lot of challenges recently and a lot of operational inefficiency. And they want to use AI to help come up with a turnaround strategy to blow the chum bucket out of the water. Ah, the sweet smell of an old day. Instead of just typing our stream of consciousness and praying that AI is picking up what we're putting down, let's use our new prompt structure to talk to it in a way that it understands best. Here's how we filled out uh, OpenAI's prompt framework with Krusty Krab's business struggles. So we said, for role and objective, you're a strategic business consultant analyzing declining customer satisfaction at the Krusty Krab restaurant. Instructions, analyze the current operational challenge and develop a comprehensive turnaround strategy. One of the key areas to address, which is under instructions, is increasing competitor pressure from the trum bucket. <laughs> For the reasoning steps, we wanted to identify the root causes, also to develop a action plan with timelines. Here's the output format. We want a business report with an executive summary, problem analysis, recommendations, and the timeline. Just a simple example here, if customers complain about a rude cashier, recommend how to train the cashier. This one's funny, so the context, the Krusty Krab has been Bikini Bottom's leading fast food establishment for 20 years, but recently lost 30% market share to the Chum Bucket's aggressive marketing and secret formula claims. Final instructions, think step by step, provide actionable solutions that Mr. Krabs can implement immediately. To show the importance of this structure, let's compare results. The left side of my screen is just a vague prompt about how the Krusty Krab is absolutely cooked and they're losing money, and the right side follows open AI's prompt structure. On the left side, it is a decent result, but it's mostly just brainstorming. So it d doesn't really give really specific and actionable advice. It's just kind of brainstorming what could be going wrong. Whereas on the right side, we triggered the AI to think for longer before it answered. And the recommendations are just so dialed in. It's telling you to record specific metrics about like how fast it takes you to deliver the food. Just look at all these strategic recommendations on the right side. Everything is very specific, very nuanced. And I'm not gonna read through this whole response, but just look how much longer the response on the right is compared to the one on the left. So next time you're prompting, just try this structure and I guarantee you'll see better results. You might be wondering, why they use these hashtags or pound symbols or uh, number signs here to uh, represent categories. The reason why is because AI understands it better when it's formatted like that. So it's just as important to format your prompts as it is to structure them and include the right categories of information. This is where the four most powerful ways of formatting your text come into play. So now we're not talking about the content itself inside, we're talking about the formatting, how it looks, the fact that we have a curly brace here before a description call out 
where before we were using hashtags. The first secret formatting method, which is my personal favorite, is called Markdown. This one's my personal favorite because it's one of the most widely used and it's easy to type it in yourself. Markdown's also just really cool to work with in general because when you write it down in code like this, um, all of the AI chatbots will understand what you're trying to visualize and can actually translate it into being actually visually different. So if you're just getting started, don't know where to start, use Markdown, incorporate it with OpenAI's prompting guide and Bob's your uncle. But not all AI tools are equal. So while Markdown might be best for most use cases, you might be surprised to know that for Google VO3, the video generator, it's actually best to give it a JSON prompt. Instead of using those hashtags to denote different sections, now you have curly braces, key value pairs. So you see, instead of talking in normal sentences, we're saying style, cinematic, photorealistic, futuristic, futuristic minimalism. Using JSON in Google VO3 gives you a lot more control over what your video is showing. By the way, all the videos and prompts I've been showing so far are included in God of Prompts 50 VO3 JSON prompts collection, which is included in their Gemini Mastery Guide, link in the description. It's completely free to download and you get so many things for free. A getting started guide on VO3, a mini course, techniques and tools, and 50 prompts to get you started. The coolest part is you can steal these prompts, put them into AI yourself, and just ask AI to edit it to whatever video you're trying to make. So I thought that Markdown and JSON were, that was it. But turns out I was wrong. There's another way to format your prompts, which is using XML tags. And this is recommended by Anthropic. It's the company who publishes Claude. They say when you have a relatively complex prompt, XML tags can be a game changer. They help Claude parse your prompts more accurately. They're saying, why use XML tags? It clearly separates the different parts of your prompt. It reduces errors because uh, the chatbots unable to misinterpret what you're saying. Flexibility, you can edit and modify your own prompt in the future. It actually helps with the human readability as well. And if you're calling Claude with an API, for example, when it returns an XML tag, you can actually use that to parse through the data. And it gives an example here. Without XML tags, Claude misunderstands the task and generates a report that doesn't match the required structure or tone. And just look at the two different outputs here. On the left is without using XML, and on the right is with prompting with XML. So there you have it from the Anthropic Prompt Engineering Guide itself. When you're using Claude, and here's Claude, so this is what I use for creative writing or brainstorming. So I'm gonna keep in mind to use XML whenever I have a like complex and domain-specific task. And check this out, I was snooping around in God of Prompt's other free materials, so they have a free Claude Mastery Guide. And look at all these uh, mega prompts. They have like preloaded prompts you can use for Claude and they're all in XML format already. Here's just an example, the business plan generator mega prompt. You can see the XML tags throughout. So that's great. That tells me the Claude mastery guide actually adheres to the best practices recommended by Anthropic themselves. The fourth and final formatting method is something called YAML. Some people prefer it because it's more readable than JSON. Like you and I can read it more easily. There's no closing tags like with XML. There's no quotes and bracers everywhere like in JSON. And it's more structured to keep hierarchies clear, so it's better for working with data. You can imagine, let's see, uh, in this example, employment, company, position, start date. So you can see how this kind of represents like a database almost. So if you're working with stuff that resembles this kind of information, then you might want to consider using YAML for your prompt instead. So those are the four formats you want to consider using in combination with our general prompting structure. Each has its superpower zone. Use Markdown as a baseline and for complex workflows. JSON for structured video and image generation. XML when you're working with Claude, for example. And there's no need to reinvent the wheel here. You don't have to type everything out from scratch. Steal other people's existing prompts put them in your chatbot and um, 
you can tell it to adjust to your use case. Remember that prompting is your first step to getting better results with AI way before fine tuning, for example. It's much easier for the average person to simply talk to AI more properly than it is to make AI smarter. Guys, if you made it this far, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss any other AI secrets. Check out the free guides in the description and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.